Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for England and going down the Angevin Empire path for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So England is a nation that starts off primarily located on the island of Great Britain right here with some holdings over in Ireland and in the region of France down here in the south and up here in the north. And even though England is such a powerful and popular nation, many newer players are deterred from playing it due to the fact that we get to fight France super early on in the game with the surrender of Main War and due to the fact that we have this disaster right here, the War of the Roses, which is going to start ticking pretty much as soon as we unpause along with some other disasters later on as well. But make no mistake, England is is still a super powerful and super fun nation and since it got updated in domination there are basically two ways to play it you could either go down the route of forming great britain and not focusing on europe too much and basically focusing on colonizing over in the new world in africa in india in southeast asia and stuff like that so that's more of a chill playthrough and then you have the angevin empire route which basically doesn't focus on colonization and focuses on us dominating europe which is precisely what this video is going to be about if you're interested in a great britain guide which i do think requires a separate guide then this is not for you but let me know in the comments below and by leaving a like if you do want to see a great britain guide either way by playing as england you will go on to dominate the entirety of the great britain region right here along with subjugating france super early on and then you'll go on to dominate the rest of europe in no time so sit back, relax, and learn what you need to do as England to become the Angevin Empire. Alright, right here we are as England. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you start up a run as England is immediately go into your parliament right here, click the start debate button, and check if you have this ability right here england gains five crown land ownership this is super super important for the start if you do not have this issue in the parliament go ahead and restart i only had to restart once to get it over there although your results may vary so after you've restarted a couple of times and after you've gotten this right here we're good to get our run started either way let's explain england a little bit more we start off with the english monarchy government type which gives us minus one national arrest and plus 0.5 year legitimacy along with minus 30 max absolutism and minus 10 percent nobility influence but we do have plus 50 guff cap and we have the parliament and english ideas are pretty good even though we're going to get rid of them later on we start off with minus one national arrest and plus 10 percent infantry combat ability which is actually really strong at the start then we finish off with plus 10 percent morale of navies heavy ship combat ability yearly navy tradition production efficiency diplo relations trade efficiency sailors land fire damage and marines sailor recovery speed and sailor maintenance and years of separatism and and plus one possible number of parliament issues either way we're going to be swapping out for the angevin ideas later on and the mission tree right here don't look at it right now because right now it's not too relevant since it's gonna change very soon after we complete this mission so really the only mission that's relevant right now is this one right here which we're going to complete either way. Either way, it's time for the setup. And this is where the whole Parliament thing comes in, because as England, we do start off with the English Villainage Nobility Privilege, which gives us some bad modifiers, such as less tax, and we cannot seize Crownland or make the nobility lose Crownland from developing. So we do want to get rid of it, and that's done by either having 30% Crownland ownership and all of the plus one monarch point privileges, or having 40% crownland ownership of course we already start off with 30 and here's where that whole parliament thing comes into play you're gonna go into the parliament start debate and select this one right here where you gain five crownland ownership and then do all of the things right here in order to pass it what i'm gonna do right here is lose 59 sailors there we go lose four diplo points lose four more diplo points and let's lose a couple of more sailors and there we go that issue has been passed and now we have 35 percent crownland ownership next what we're gonna do is we're gonna summon the diet and you can pick whichever agenda is best for you. And then we're going to go ahead and seize land. Now we have 40% crownland ownership and we can immediately revoke the English villainage nobility privilege. And just like that, we've gotten rid of that very nasty privilege. Now we can go ahead and give the clergy religious state no cheaper advisor privileges just yet because we are going to be losing stab. Then you can also give the clergy religious diplomats along with clerical education. Next, we're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies. And that's it for now. And we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and indebted to the burghers. Then you can sell titles if you want to for some additional money, although it's not really necessary at this point. 
Now it's time for some advisors. Go ahead and hire whichever level one admin advisor you want. I'm going to get this tax guy. Then you usually have this half cost diplo rep guy. Go ahead and hire him if you can. If not, look for a diplo rep or improve relations dip advisor and then get a morale, discipline, fort defense or manpower level one mill advisor. I do have this fort defense guy, so I am going to hire him. Next, of course, we immediately need to start preparing for our war versus frames right here, which is going to happen pretty soon. And unlike in previous runs where we declared that war, this is going to be different. We're going to let it fire through that event. So the first thing we want to do to prepare for that is actually select a naval doctrine right here. And I do recommend selecting the unique wooden wall naval doctrine, which gives us plus one naval combat bonus off of owned coasts. Next, we need to ally some French rivals. And in my game, that is Castile and Aragon. So go ahead and try and ally whichever of France's rivals are. Of course, we do also start off allied with Portugal right at the start. And if we go into right here, I can see all the nations that would be willing to ally me. So what I'm going to do is ally Castile right here and Royal Mary Austria as well. You do want to have relations with Austria either way, no matter if they're the French rival or not. Once a couple of days pass, I'll attempt to ally Aragon as well, even though Castile and them have rivaled each other. What I'm going to do to try and secure that better is to Royal Mary them. And there we go. Those are pretty much your alliances right at the start. English rivals and potentially Austria and the Pope as well if you want to. Now you can go ahead and set some rivals yourself. I recommend rivaling France, of course. And for now, you don't have to rival anyone else. Don't rival Scotland because that may make France and Scotland more likely to ally each other. Either way, we'll be setting some more rivals later on. Now it's time to sort our armies and navies. And the first thing you want to do right here is take this light ship fleet. Tell them to protect trade in the English Channel and go home during war. And then this is the rest of our fleet. Six heavies and 18 transports. What we're immediately going to start doing right here is building up a bunch of galleys to help us even more war with our war versus France. About 15 should be enough for now. After that, go ahead and hire the free company in whichever province galleys aren't being built. And then it's time to wait for these diplomats to come back. As soon as the first guy comes back, start spying on France so we can get the sieges done with them a little bit faster. Once you unpause a little bit, you'll probably notice that you are able to take the mission to raise an army right here, which gives us a permaclaim on the entire region of Britain, which is this right here, and a subjugation sea beyond Scotland, basically allowing us to vassalize them. Do go ahead and take this mission. And as you can see at this point, the War of the Roses disaster will start ticking as well. That is okay, we do want to get this over with. So don't try and avoid this disaster. Once you've gotten your alliances in order, start currying favors with the nations that you think will help you potentially versus France. You can do that by trying to declare war on them and seeing which of these guys would accept being called in with favors. In my case, it's Aragon and Castile the French rivals that of course I allied and in your game it will probably be the same the French rivals that you have allied which could be once again Castile, Aragon, Austria, Burgundy, someone like that. So start currying favors with them. This is what your diplomats should be doing. Additionally, once your armies are over in Sussex, you can go ahead and merge this army right here and remove three cavalry regiments. Those guys are pretty expensive and we're losing a lot of money to, due to them. As you can see right here, now I'm making money. Now, as we're waiting for the surrender of main event to fire, you should keep checking periodically if France and Scotland are allying each other. In my case, they aren't just yet, but of course, there's still a chance. And if you don't think they're going to ally each other, you can go ahead and move this army and the free company down here to this region. If they're allying each other, leave the free company up here. Or you could also take it down here, but then you are going to have to hire some more mercenary companies to peace out Scotland. Because when the surrender of main war happens, we're going to be the attacker, France is going to be the defender, and we will have to deal with their allies. Once your galleys have been built, put them together with your main fleet right here in the Straits of Dover. And this is the event that we've been waiting for, the surrender of Maine. So you can wait a little bit, about two or three months before you actually click something. So this is the period where you need to check if the France-Scotland alliance has been completed. It hasn't. These guys aren't allied. So I personally don't need any armies up here. If France and Scotland are allied in your game, then you would have the free company up here and potentially another mercenary stack such as the free Swiss Guard or some of these smaller ones that don't cost that much. And with those stacks up there, you would white piece Scotland. Don't take anything from them. No money, no warps. Don't make them break any alliances and stuff like that. Just a white piece on Scotland. And after that, you would move your troops down here. But in my game, all of my troops are over here because these guys haven't allied each other. And I'm pretty lucky, honestly, with the France alliance situation in my game. They've only allied Britain right here. As you all know, they do break their starting alliance with Provence super often. But don't underestimate France no matter who their allies are because they are pretty strong themselves they have those super strong generals right at the start and they have all of these subjects over here so either way with all of that said this is the war 
Corpus as France. And of course, we're going to choose the second option right here. We will not surrender an inch of territory to the French and the surrender of Maine War happens, where it's basically a reconquest war for France, but it's a subjugation or enforced personal union war for us. So this is the option we're going to be choosing. Like I said, we have a month or two right here to wait. So in this time, you could look for a morale or discipline advisor, even if he's a level two. It will help you out a lot. Go ahead and hire him if he's available. I do have this guy right here, so I am going to hire him. Then what you need to do is also hire John Talbot here, who's going to be your general. And you can give your ruler military command as well and put him in charge of the free company or something. Then I also recommend getting another mercenary company up preferably one with a very good shock general. In my case, let's see, we have the white company right here who has a five shock guy, and we have the forlorn hope, which is a four shock guy. Obviously, I'm gonna hire the guy with the most shock, which is the white company precisely in this province right here. And this should be about enough troops for you to defeat France, no matter who their allies are. But you need to be careful of their stacks right here. So try to avoid the French armies while fighting their subjects as armies. And another thing you need to do before this war is activate the defensive edict in Laborde, in Normandy, and in Picardy as well. Now you're set defensively, you can also go ahead and hire an admiral for this if you wish, and you can go ahead and blockade their provinces over here. And once you're ready, I'm just gonna wait for this mercenary company to recruit, just like that it's up, and even though it's not at full morale, you can go ahead and select this option right here, and there's the war started. Once the war starts, you will be able to take the mission The Hundred Years' War, where the event Destiny of England will happen, and we can choose whether to go down the British path or the Angevin path. Of course, we're going to take this mission right now, and we're going to choose this second option right here. We cannot abandon our Angevin claim, where we replace the British missions with the Angevin ones, and basically we choose to go down that path. And there we go. Now you've committed, you have the Angevin missions. This is a super important one that we'll get to later. Either way, if you're planning to play Great Britain, this is where you would select the first option. But that's a completely different guide. So now, go ahead and unsiege Maine from France, and go ahead and siege down Chartres, Paris, fight your wars, avoid the battles with France, fight their subject. If you're lucky and if you're getting favors super, super fast, you may be able to call in some of your allies during this war although it's not a guarantee. And while we're in this war, don't worry if this is still ticking. Like I said, we'll get to it later. At this point, a year or two have passed since I started the war, I white pieced Brittany, so I didn't take anything from them, and because I have 10 favors with Aragon, I can call them in. If you can call one of your allies in this war, definitely go ahead and do it. But that's not something that's guaranteed. It's only a possibility depending on how quick you are. Sometimes you may need to stack your entire armies on forts to deter the French from attacking. That is what I'm doing. Even though I'm losing manpower doing this, at least I'll avoid battles with the super strong French generals. At this point, after calling in Aragon, who still has Naples by the way, I can also call in Castile. Now, this war has become super easy. Just before the War of the Roses event is about to fire, what I recommend doing is actually deleting all of your forts over in the region of Britain. No matter what you choose to do right here, whether you want to beat them up, we want to have an easier time sieging down what they've taken, so that's why we deleted the forts, or if you want to let them win, we still want to have an easier time of sieging everything down, or of them sieging everything down. Either way, now I can additionally call in Portugal into this war as well, even without ever creating favors with them. So, the reality with France right here is, you need to not lose until you can call in all your allies. And this is the War of the Roses disaster right here, which is about to fire in my game right here. You can either support this first house right here, and of course it does tell you the stats of whoever you're gonna support, or the second one right here. Either way, we lose manpower, we gain unrest, and we lose stability, and pretenders rise up. In my game, both of these guys have a total of 8 Monarch points, this guy's a 242, this guy's a 134. But since we're gonna be focusing on the Diplo game right here, at least in the early part, I am gonna take this four Diplo points guy. And there we go, that's the War of the Roses disaster started. If you wanna beat these guys up, go ahead and do it. These are the requirements to end it, just to beat them all up and basically kill the stack with the pretender in charge. Or you can actually let them win. And there we go, just as I'm wrapping up my war with France right here, the House of York has won the War of the Roses. We lose prestige if we let these guys win, but we do gain stab back. And just like that, for me, that disaster is over. You do want to get this done with, no matter if you let those guys win or if you beat them up before you peace out France. It's very important that you don't peace out France and then that happens 
happens because our ruler will change, France will hate us, and then they'll break free. Either way, after you wrap up the War of the Roses, you will be able to take the mission, the War of the Roses, and depending on what you did, you will gain these various bonuses. If we beat those guys up, we gain legitimacy, chance of a new year, average monarch lifespan. If we let them win, we gain minus 10% aggressive expansion impact and nobles loyalty. I do think letting them win is a little bit more beneficial for pewing France right here because it will minimize the number of people in the coalition. Either way, go ahead and take this mission once that disaster is done. Another mission you may be able to take if you let these guys win is the royal court where we gain that unique parliament issue right there and the clergy and the burghers lose some land and there we go actually there's more stability for me as well either way by the time you finish that war your war with france will probably be done as well in which case you should of course go and enforce your union with france right here and take all of their money this does generate quite a lot of aggressive expansion and a coalition may form but if you wait until december 31st right here to peace out a lot of these guys actually won't join because of the year tick since a lot of them are at 51 and 52 right here so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna wait until december 31st and then peace out and that'll make less people join the coalition and by the way if you're letting the war of the roses guys win in those events that pop up you always want to select the option for more pretenders to rise up i literally didn't do anything with them i let these guys over in britain siege everything down and castile and portugal and aragon beat up the guys that spawn down here pretty simple once this war is pretty much done, you can, of course, get rid of the more expensive mercenary company. If you have a level 2 mill advisor, at this point, you can also replace him with a level 1 guy, additionally, to save some money. Now that it's December 31st, I'm going to go ahead and peace out. So, the Union with France option and all of their money. And that's your PU war with France done. And just like that, they're our junior partner. Of course, aggressive expansion is extremely high right now, so we definitely want to chill. So with one diplomat right here, I'll be improving relations with allies. With the other diplomat, I'll start improving relations with outraged countries. And then with the third guy, once he frees himself up, I'm going to improve relations with France. Either way, once that war is done, you may be able to take some of these options right here. You definitely want to designate Calais as the staple port, no matter who hates you, and familiarize separation of powers. Very good decisions right here. And you can also start the French-English Reconciliation Act in the Parliament, which will make France like us a little bit more, and we gain prestige and staff. So definitely go ahead and do that. And go ahead and pass it immediately. You can go ahead and ignore corruption, diplo support, bribe MP, pretty much all of the stuff right here, except for giving your estates crownland. So that's the only one I'm not going to be doing. And there we go. That issue has been passed and France likes us a little bit more, even though they're still outraged. Another mission you'll be able to take after you wrap up this war with France is seize France's throne right here, where we gain some prestige, manpower recovery speed, and liberty desire in same content and subjects minus 10%, along with a perma claim on the entire region of France. Now you can go ahead and set some rivals. I'm going to rival Denmark, the Ottomans, and the Mamluks in my campaign. Try to avoid rivaling Burgundy, even if they've rivaled you, because we might want to try and flip them friendly in order to get the Burgundian succession, although it's rarely an option. Now that this war is done, all you have left to do is chill, recover your manpower, recover your money, wait for aggressive expansion to die down a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and start expanding into Scotland and into Ireland. Missions that you definitely want to focus on doing throughout the entirety of this early portion of the campaign, even though not specifically at every point, is the Acts of Parliament right here and a House Divided. This one needs you to pass six issues in the Parliament, this one five, this one needs you to have three agendas from the burghers completed, this one three agendas from the nobles along with nobles loyalty. These are pretty good ones that you need to unlock some better ones. Make sure to try and complete those. So whenever you do agendas right here, focus on the nobility and burghers instead of the clergy. Now, just by turning off forts and lowering army mate and firing that level 2 mill advisor, we're back to making money once again. It will be quite a while before you pay off most of your loans and get your manpower back up, but either way we're waiting for aggressive expansion to die down, so we're just chilling. At this point, something else you can do if you've gotten tech 4 in every category is activate the Encouraged Development State Edict over in our capital state of London and develop the province of London itself up to 30 development. Since it's already above 15, I do recommend expanding infrastructure first as well and then bumping it up to 30 development with whichever points you want, depending on what you have the most in. This will help speed up the spawning of the Renaissance a little bit and it'll help us take off the age objective for a large city. Now, what's happened here in my game is pretty weird, but Burgundy declared war on Bourbon right here, and I don't think that uh, nations consider subjects of subjects anymore in this latest update. So uh, Burgundy couldn't see that I and my allies would actually come into this, so that's why they declared. I do think this is a bug for this patch. If this happens to you, of course, you can, you know, beat up some stronger nations by calling in all your allies. But what I'm going to do in my game right here is do a quick white piece on Burgundy 
in order to not exploit bugs in guides. Of course, if this was A to Z, I'd totally take advantage of it. <laughs> For your tier two government reform rate here as England and later the Angevin Empire, I do think you have three relevant options. Strength and noble privileges, of course, you already know. For the main power, we are going to want to use that main power to fight all our wars over here in Europe. Then you could also compromise with the nobility. You already know the effects. Increased levies no longer increases their influence and we gain some other bonuses. And then you have this unique one right here, the Strength and House of Lords, which gives you reform progress growth, parliament effect, duration which is actually pretty strong and nobles loyalty plus five percent it's solely up to you which three of these you take i'm gonna go with strength and house of lords right here simply because it's unique and i do think it's pretty cool i did forget to mention that after you get all your stab back after the war of the roses you can go ahead and give out the cheaper advisor privileges for each of the estates by this point, while you're chilling, if you've managed to pay off your burger loans, you can go ahead and get brand new burger loans and start building up some of the buildings that we've unlocked with Tech 4, mainly the marketplaces, which are super important as England. So make sure to build them in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces. There we go. I'm going to put one down in York, in Gloucester, in Lincolnshire right here in London, and then in all of the provinces right here that are also available, such as Calais, for example, Co right here, Contentan. You get the point. Focus on marketplaces first, then we'll get to our churches and production buildings. Make sure to keep seizing Crownland when all estates are above 50 loyalty. Around the 1460s is when you'll also want to lower autonomy in every single province that you can. Sure, some rebels will rise up due to this, but it's super important that we do it in order to make more money and gain more Crownland. Right now, it's only a couple of years after the France War ended, and I'm already making about 10 ducats per month, of course with army maintenance down and with forts turned off. But still, if you get the Prospering Times event, which of course you will, and hopefully you will get it in the English Channel Trade Node. In my game, I got it in Chester, actually, which is in the North Sea. Either way, not that bad. Always choose the second option right here, which pretty much creates a level 3 center of trade in that province. Look at this. This is what I'm going to show off right now. If you go into the Buildings tab and we try and look for Chester right here, when we want to build a marketplace, we can see that we only gain 0.39 trade power from that province, right? But... After we do this right here, and now if you want to build a marketplace in Chester, it's 13.6. So super, super important that you choose that second option. Once the Renaissance spawns, I do recommend taking out loans, which is what I just did in order to embrace it. After that, you could of course try selling it to someone to make a little bit of money. Once you hit Admin Tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group. And for your first idea group as England and later the Angevin Empire, I recommend Diplomatic Ideas. This is relevant because we are going to be playing with subjects heavily for the entirety of the campaign. Of course, we got France, we're going to get Scotland, maybe some other nations to vassalize and reconquer their cores. Maybe you'll even get Burgundy as a subject, so you'll definitely want the slots right here. The diplomats are great for improving relations, minimizing coalitions. With this one right here, we'll be able to take more provinces. And of course, this option right here enables us to royal marry nations and break those royal marriages without losing stab. And hopefully we can pick up a few PUs. But of course, later on down the line, our missions do want us to focus on the HRE as well, and we will be gunning for the HRE Emperorship as well. So the high diplo rep and the lots of diplomats and diplo relations will help us ally all of the electors and try and secure the Holy Roman Emperorship for ourselves as well. So definitely diplomatic ideas for your first idea group. In my game, actually, Castile have just rivaled me, which is pretty unfortunate, but it is what it is. Either way, later on, we do want to expand down there, so we won't be keeping those alliances for too long. Right now, for me, the coalition has just disbanded. The final member of the Paladinate has left it. And once the coalition disbands for you as well, it is time to move on with your wars by declaring on Scotland right here. So whenever the coalition disbands, it's time to raise army maintenance and activate all of your forts and take your armies up here to get ready to fight Scotland. Of course, I'm going to leave this army down here to take out Brittany since they're allied. But in this war with Scotland, we're going to subjugate them pretty simple. Now that my army maintenance is up, I'll be declaring on Scotland with the subjugation CB. You'll be doing the same. And once you go ahead and defeat Scotland, you're of course going to go ahead and select the English vassal option right here and take as much money as you can from them. This is of course quite a lot aggressive expansion, just like in the war versus France, but don't worry about it at all. No one really cares about this. And there we go. Just like that, Scotland is our vassal as well. We've wrapped up pretty much the entirety of the island of Great Britain right here, and we'll also be able to take the mission Subjugate Scotland, which gives us admin points, perma claims on some of the Norwegian provinces over here, and the event, the purchase of Orkney happened to Norway. Basically, we can offer Norway 200 ducats to buy Orkney, which is this province right here, if they do have it, of course, if Scotland doesn't still have it, or we can unlock a decision to purchase it later on. Really, there's no need to wait later on, and you can just get it immediately if Scotland doesn't have it. Now that we've done that, it's once again time to chill a little bit and focus on developing our nation economically before we go and conquer the entirety of Ireland.
After you subjugate Scotland, you can go ahead and give the nobles strong duchies. Once a little bit of time has passed, after you've subjugated Scotland, you can go ahead and continue with your wars by wiping out everyone that's left over in Ireland. Simply go ahead and declare on whichever nation you want to, try and co-belligerent some of their allies, and go ahead and conquer all of these guys. It really is as simple as that. These are super easy wars, and it's time to get them done. Now that this war is done, I'll be full annexing both of the nations that I fought, just like that. We don't really care about aggressive expansion with these guys over here. And as soon as that's done, I'm immediately gonna go ahead and declare on the next nation, which is Tyrone over here. Let's try and co-belligerent Ormond, these yellow guys, that's exactly what I'll do. And there we go, it really is as simple as that. Once you get to admin 6, definitely start building all of those production buildings immediately, especially in the high value trade good provinces. For your first age ability, you should of course take justified wars. Burgundy has once again started a conquest war versus one of France's subjects right here, the Apanages, in their conquest of Bourbon, which is this province right here. I do think this is a bug, so this time I'm not even going to bother with this war, I'm just going to use the console to white piece them. Like I said, I think it's a bug, that's why I'm not doing anything with this. But in your game, listen, if you're cool with that, you can definitely keep taking stuff from Burgundy if they keep declaring these wars on France's subjects in your game, just like they do in mine. But like I said, I'll use the console to white piece them. Once your second parliament debate ends, the one that we chose from over here to make France like us, then the next one you should start right after that is the Curtail French Nobility Act right here, where pretenders rise up in some French provinces, we lose tab, but we do gain money and stuff like that along with nobles' influence. Now, you may think this isn't too relevant, but it actually is, because we do need to complete that agenda to further advance down our mission tree here, because we do need for this mission shatter French nobility. So, this is going to be your third agenda, after the Kremlin one at the start, and then the second one was making France like us, this is the third one you need to activate. And then, simply go ahead and give these guys some other stuff, like they usually demand. I'm going to give them army tradition, let's give them uh, sailors over here, and there we go. There it is, we lost some stab, and pretenders rose up in France. France should be able to go and beat them up, but if they're not, just go ahead and beat them yourself. Either way, now that this mission is done, I'll be full annexing these two nations as well. Very, very simple. Once France beats up the pretenders, you can go ahead and take this mission, Shatter French Nobility, where the nobles will become super loyal and our ruler gains some points. Excellent. My guy went from a 601 to a 611, and I got 100 admin points. For your tier 3 government reform, I do recommend representatives of the crown quite a lot as England, especially for the vassals and marches gain increased national tax, along with the diplo relations and vassal force limit. If you're not planning on playing with subjects that much, basically if Scotland and France are your only subjects that you want to get for this campaign, you can definitely go with expanded royal court or centralized bureaucracy. And later, when you stop playing with subjects, of course you can flip out of this. But for now, I do recommend this one. The Iberian Wedding just happened in my game where Castile pewed Aragon, this is pretty common. You may may not be allied to either of those guys by this point, or you may still be. Really doesn't matter too much. Either way, we don't have time to waste, so as soon as you wrap up in war in Ireland, go ahead and declare your next one. I'm gonna fight Leinster and Offaly in my game. Now that this war is done, I'll be full annexing these nations as well, just like that, and I'll immediately go ahead and declare on Kildare right here in Cobbledger and Desmond. Be careful not to declare with something like this though. Around this point is when you can start working on the whole HRE plan as well. I've already been allied to Brandenburg for quite a while, now I'm about to secure Bohemia as well, and then two more electors. You really want to ally four electors here. As we can see, Brandenburg is already pretty close to voting for me. Now while I'm still in this war, I'll be declaring my final war over in Ireland versus the nation of Clanricard and Tyrconnell. And there we go. Pretty much in rapid succession, you should eat all of these guys up. Risk of a coalition, yes, it does exist, but you don't really care. Now that I'm done with this war, I'll piece these two guys out and full annex them, and I'll do the same for this war as well. And just like that, in rapid succession, we've conquered all of Ireland. After you do that, you will be able to take the mission Conquer Ireland, where we gain some admin points along with bonuses over here, and we unlock the Crown of Ireland Parliament issue, which we do need to take care of later. Additionally, you'll also be able to take the mission Unify the Isles, where you gain some prestige and prestige-related bonuses. And relating to the Crown of Ireland Act right here, basically if we go ahead and pass this debate right here, we will gain development over in every province over in Ireland, basically one base production, and we also create the Kingdom of Ireland under us as a personal union, and they get to rule all of these provinces over here. This is pretty much more roleplay related, I would say, so you can go ahead and do this and then create the Kingdom of Ireland as your junior partner over there, or you can not do it and simply keep the provinces for yourself. It's totally up to you. I, I really don't think there is technically a better way to do this. 
Either way, I've gone ahead and started it just to go ahead and show it off. But there we go. I'll give the military support, grant Navy commissions. I will not allow the use of Kremlin. We don't want to give these guys Kremlin. Let's lose some people influence. And there we go. These are the options right here. Ireland should remain under our direct rule. We gain admin points, mill points. All of those provinces get even more bonuses or we gain Ireland as a junior partner. Once again, we gain the admin and diplo points. Ireland will be released as a subject and we gain the crown of Ireland until the end of the game, giving us prestige, diplo relations and unjustified demands. Like I said, do whichever one you want to. Sure, it is better to own the provinces yourself directly for economic aspects and force limit and stuff like that. But if you're into roleplay, you should go ahead and release them as a personal union. I'm going to do this option right here simply to show it off for this guide. But like I said, it's totally up to you. This little branch right here is pretty similar to the Great Britain branch as well, except for the Angevon route, I don't think this will allow us to integrate these guys. I may be wrong though, but we'll get to see later. Now I've just gotten new burger loans. I'm going to use these burger loans to focus on upgrading any center of trade that are still at level one. There we go. I'm just going to bump up Gloucester over here a couple of times so we can upgrade it. And it's pretty much as simple as that. That's what I'm doing right now. Income is pretty insane right now in 1472 for me, even though I really haven't conquered anything myself during this campaign. France is a junior partner, we don't gain money from them. Ireland is a junior partner, we don't gain money from them. Scotland is a vassal, we do gain some money from them, but very little. So you can see how powerful England is, even without us conquering anything. This is the only province I've gained right here, and it was originally a Scotland province, I just got it through the event. This is all only our original holdings, although very soon, that's about to change. If at any point in time, by the way, during the entirety of your campaign, you are able to Royal Mary Burgundy, then you should definitely do it and try it and go for the Burgundian succession. Unfortunately, in my game, I haven't been able to get them to stop rivaling me, no matter how much I improve relations with them. But if you've succeeded in stopping them from rivaling you in your game or not having them as your rival at all at any point, definitely go ahead and Royal Mary them. Here's another war that Burgundy declared, unfortunately, there's another piece out. If this is working as intended, apologies for not doing anything in this war, but I really don't think it is working as intended. And there we go, the Burgundian succession has happened, and Burgundy has actually chosen Oldenburg as their junior partner. Either way, if you manage to get the Burgundian succession for yourself, that's awesome, and now you have all of this land right here for free, which is super, super nice. If not, well, it's even better that we waited until now because we can simply reconquer some French cores. And of course, a general with a hundred tradition is always nice. Let's take a look at him, and he's actually not that strong. He's pretty good at sieging though, but really not that powerful. Right now, I've also allied Koln and Trier. And there we go. I have four elector allies. Brandenburg is already voting for me. This is not something you strictly need to focus on, like improving relations with them, sending them gifts, real marrying them and stuff like that. But eventually, you will get elected. We'll really start focusing after we clean this up right here. Either way, once you've wrapped up Scotland and Ireland and chilled a little bit and waited for aggressive expansion to die down, it's time to continue on with your wars over in France by fighting whoever owns some of these provinces over here. Either Burgundy or Brittany first because we do need to conquer their provinces for these two missions right here. Right now I have a truce with Burgundy since, you know, they keep declaring. But either way, later the war with them will be super easy since France has scores on this. Either way, after you're done with Ireland, fight either Brittany or Burgundy, whoever one you want to. I'm going to do Brittany simply because I still have a truce with Burgundy. And by the way, Burgundy did break free or something from Oldenburg without my interference. Once you do defeat Brittany, you should be able to full annex them without any negative consequences. So once you do that, definitely go ahead and full annex them. And there we go. Now we're done with this region as well. After you annex Brittany, you will be able to take the mission to secure the Duke's crown, which of course will give you these modifiers with France since we've already PU'd them. If you haven't PU'd France and you do this, you'll get 150 Eminem points. But there we go. That's that mission done. Now all we need to do to basically be prepared to take the Angevin Kingdom mission is to seize Burgundy. And these are the provinces that we need to do that. Basically the provinces in Picardy and in the two Burgundy areas right here. Which is super handy since France will gain cores on them, even if you don't PU Burgundy. For your second age ability, if you're planning on stealing Norway or something like that from Denmark, you can definitely go with this right here. If not, choose whichever one you want to. For your second idea group as England and later the Angevin Empire, I feel like you have a couple of options. We opened up with Diplo. For your second one, you could either take a mill idea group, such as quality, for example, to buff up our navy even more, offensive, or even quantity since we're super rich and we want to be able to field a massive army. Or you can keep focusing on your economy right here in the early game while your subjects still do most of the heavy lifting in the wars by taking some money-making or nation-improving idea groups, such as economic, even though it's not that good anymore, I feel like it's still really 
completely relevant as England and the Age of an Empire. The tax and yearly inflation reduction is great. The merchant will come in very nice. These, I guess, aren't too relevant for now, at least. The interest per annum, land maintenance, production efficiency, debt from manufacturers, and goods produced are really, really strong. Then, additionally, you could also go with infrastructure ideas, which will help you with construction and with developing and basically lowering the expenses that you already have quite a lot. So, if you're planning on making money and letting your subjects do everything for you, take economic or infrastructure. If you're planning on doing most of the heavy lifting yourself, even though you have subjects, then go with the mill ones such as offensive, quality, or quantity. For me and my game, I'm gonna take economic ideas, especially for the goods produced and all of the other bonuses right here. Now that my truce with Burgundy is up, I'll be declaring on them and reconquering France's scores. You'll be doing the same if you haven't PU'd them after you've taken care of Brittany. We're pretty much working on these missions right here, still. So, there's my declaration on Burgundy for the reconquest of Picardy, for example. I'll call in Bohemia, Brandenburg, and Austria simply because they have annoying allies like Genoa and Venice. And when you defeat France in your war, if you're doing it like I am, basically reconquering France's scores, here's what you need to do before you peace out. First, you're going to go ahead and go into the decisions tab and hover over this right here. And you'll notice down there at the bottom that France needs to own less than 40 provinces, which I think in paradox terms is 39. So, do not feed them back all of their provinces. For this mission right here, we need us or them to own the two Burgundy areas and the Picardy area right here. So in my game, France has 30 provinces, right? When they annex Bourbon, they'll be at 32. If I feed them all of this, that's 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, which means I can only give them two more provinces. Basically, I can't give them back these provinces right here, or I can, but I need to take other things for myself. So what I'm going to do with this war right here is give this back to France, along with these two provinces, so that's seven more for them, and once they annex Bourbon, they'll be at 39, unless they also annex Nevers, which won't really happen by the time we get to complete this mission, so we're good. And what I'll do instead is take this province right here for myself. Just like that, we own all of the relevant provinces from Burgundy without giving France too many provinces. And then additionally, I'll also take Bruges for myself since it's an important center of trade. And that's my war right here with Burgundy done. Of course, be careful of the aggressive expansion. It shouldn't really be a problem if you're giving France their cores back. And there we go. Now we can see that France owns 37 provinces. Once they annex Bourbon, it'll be at 39 and we're still good to go. And of course, once you can complete the mission Seize Burgundy, basically after you've gotten all of those provinces back, you will be taking it immediately. And France or us, depending on who took those provinces over there, basically the provinces gain all of these nice bonuses right there. Now, all we need to do to form the Angevin Kingdom is to conquer the entirety of the region of France. Most likely in your game, just like in mine, you'll either have Provence, Savoy, or the Pope left down here. Basically, these two provinces from Savoy, these four from the Pope, and maybe a couple of them from Burgundy, depending on what happened with the succession. So the provinces I need to conquer in my game are these four right here, these two right here, and these four right here. Of course, I'll be taking all of them for myself. Nevers and Bourbon, even though they're subjects of subjects, still count, as we can see according to this mission. Something else you can do during this point, if Provence doesn't exist, you can go ahead and release them. Sure, you'll pop them out in provinces which are already your course, such as Maine, for example, but then I could use favors with the Pope to make him return some of the Provence's provinces right here without actually going to war with him, and then the only thing I'll need to do is simply fight Savoy and Burgundy. A reconquest for Provence's course for Burgundy, Burgundy, by the way, and then just Savoy for these two provinces. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in my game right here, is release Provence as a vassal, and then I can ask the Pope to return these and reconquer these from Burgundy, just to minimize aggressive expansion since it's already super high. You don't have to do something like this, you could do it if you have the chance, but it's totally not necessary. This is just a little trick to get less aggressive expansion and do less wars. Now I'm gonna ask the Pope for some Provence cores back just to show you how it works. There it is, there's the return core province, let's do it for Avignon for example, and there it is. Of course, it costs favors, but you're gonna be currying favors and asking for provinces back. There we go, I can actually do it again for this province right here. For your tier 4 government reform, I actually recommend taking lanes for the church to give us even better relations with the Pope. And this is for another reason as well. For the Angevin Empire, I feel like we really do want to stay Catholic, especially because we're going to be becoming the HRE Emperor later on as well. Protestant Reformed, Anglican, and all of those other ones I do think are great for Great Britain, but I think, as the Angevin Empire, we do need to stay Catholic. So lands for the church. Now I'm going to be continuing my wars right here by declaring on Savoy for the conquest of Brescia, 
Russia because, like I said, we do need to own all of the provinces over in the region of France. Savoy is allied to Castile, which has Aragon, so that's going to make this a pretty big war. So that's why I'm going to call in most of my allies right here. In fact, all of them. Why not make it easier? I'm using France as claims because, of course, I can't get claims on Savoy. Whenever you have the ability to do another debate, you could go ahead and pass the Bank Charter Act for this mission right here, basically giving us some nice monetary bonuses, but I feel like that's really meant for after the France War, so your economy stabilizes a bit. So if it didn't do it then, there's really no need to do it now. So you can do whichever one you want to until we get to the ones that we force. And now that the war with Savoy is done, I'll be taking only the provinces that we need in order to take everything over in France. We'll be focusing on the rest of them later on because we do want to go down in Italy as well. More on that later. Now I have some more favors with the Pope. I'm going to ask him to return this province right here. And the only one we have left to do to get back to Provence is this one. So let's go more favors. If you have a province inside the HRE that you need to conquer for that mission, like I have with Metz right here that Lorraine owns, now is when you need to start focusing on on improving relations with the Elector allies and getting them to elect you the HRE Emperor. As we can see, all of the guys that I've allied are already pretty close to voting for me, so what I'll do is simply improve relations with them, or royal marry them if I haven't, send them gifts, and stuff like that. The usual to get someone to like you. As we can see, now I've allied the Palatinate as well, I'm improving relations with all of these guys, I've guaranteed all of them, I've sent them all gifts, I've offered them all mill access just to get them to like me as much as possible. There we go. Koln and Brandenburg are already voting for me. Palatinate is really close, pretty much borderline voting. And then Bohemia, of course, they're an elector. They'll always vote for themselves. And I should be able to flip Trier pretty soon over here. The Austrian guy, Ladislas Posthumus, he is 50. I am expecting to get elected after he dies. At this point, I'll also go ahead and get some new burger loans and continue to improve my nation economically. By this point, I'm making about 30 ducats a month. And there we go. In fact, that was pretty lucky right there. But the Austrian guy just died and I've been elected HRE Emperor, which is perfect. This is sort of around the time you want to get elected as well, after you're pretty much almost done with wrapping up the region of France. Either way, now I can freely fight Lorraine right here without having to worry about fighting the HRE Emperor. And I'll get right to that as soon as I take these provinces from Burgundy. I also need 51 favors with the Pope to make him return this to Provence, and that should be done in about a year or two. Of course, by becoming the HR Emperor, you could focus on passing these reforms right here, you know, quelling the Reformation and stuff like that, making all of these guys convert to Catholic, expanding the HRE, or you could simply not do anything with the reforms and only focus on the other bonuses that you're getting from being the HR Emperor, which is pretty much the manpower, the force limit, the income, and stuff like that. So it's totally up to you if you actually focus on this or not. Either way, you do want to end up being the HRE Emperor as you'll later see through some of these missions down here. This one being the most important, the first one, where we gain Diplorep and reasons for these guys to elect us, and they also lose aggressive expansion towards us, and we gain some points. Of course, when you've built all of the relevant buildings in your provinces, like I have with all the high-value trade good provinces, you can include subjects. You're gonna get that land either way later, right? So, why not make our subjects richer? They're all junior partners, they'll be stronger, and they'll help out in wars more, and the provinces will already be pretty developed once we get them later on. So, now that I've built everything in my provinces, I'm gonna start building them in my subjects' provinces. Now I finally have enough favors with the Pope to make him return the final Provence core down here, and just like that we've gotten these four provinces, all of them which are pretty developed and very important provinces, back for free. You don't have to do it like this, you could conquer them from the Pope or from whoever owns them, this is just one way to minimize wars and aggressive expansion, since everyone is already pretty mad. By this point you may have noticed this in your game as well, that you have lots of diplomatic relations, I have 12 in my game right now, including all of the subjects and alliances. So my subjects are Provence, France, Scotland and Ireland, and then my allies are 5 electors along with Austria, the Pope and Portugal. You don't really need Portugal, but I do recommend keeping them around simply because we're gonna want their help because we're gonna start fighting Castile and Aragon slash Spain pretty soon. Once you hit Admin Tech 8, make sure to immediately start building courthouses because we will need that extra governing capacity because we'll want to state the entirety of France as soon as we integrate France. Now that my truce with Burgundy is up, I'll be declaring war on them to take these three provinces from them. As we can see, we can use the Imperial Band CB as well. I won't be doing that. I'll, be, I'll just be doing a reconquest for Verdun, for example, but for Provence. Remember, we don't actually want to give France any more provinces. And I do need to hurry it up because I think they have started integrating Nevers. I'll once again call in a bunch of allies simply because they have lots of allies as well. As soon as we get these three back, I'll go for Lorraine and then we'll be able to finally take the mission 
the Angevon Kingdom. And now that this war is pretty much done, I'll be giving Verdun and Bar back to Provence, I'll be taking Lorraine for myself, and since we're pretty much chill with aggressive expansion over here, as we can see, I'll be taking a couple of more provinces over in the English Channel trade node for myself, such as these right here. Very important that we expand over here as well. And that's my war right now with Burgundy done. Now all we need to do is fight Lorraine. And I'll be declaring war immediately on Lorraine because I think France is pretty close to wrapping up Nevers right here. Once again, I'll call on everyone just to get this done as soon as possible. And now that we're done with this war as well, of course, I'll be full annexing Lorraine as well. And that's the entire region of France under our control before the year 1500. That's with standard conquest, nothing too fancy or anything like that. Of course, it could be done a lot faster. Either way, once you do conquer the entire region of France, either you or your subjects, you will be able to take this mission down here, the Angevin Kingdom, where we gain a bunch of development in the province of Anjou, and it also gains some very nice modifiers, and we unlock the Acts of Union Parliament issue, and we gain permaclaims on a bunch of provinces over in areas in the region of Iberia and Italy. And just like that, we've taken this super important mission. If by this point you've also been elected Holy Roman Emperor, you will be able to take the mission Holy Roman Struggle, which if you're the Emperor will give you the top bonuses down there. Otherwise, if you've expanded in the regions of Germany, instead of becoming the HRA Emperor, all of those guys will lose AE with you and you'll gain admin points. Of course, you'll be doing it with this first option right here, where you gain Diplorep and reasons to elect. And there we go. That's all we needed in order to be able to form the Angevin Empire by forcing this right here. All you need to do now is to wait for admin deck 10. Now, unfortunately, I didn't mess up with the problem provinces here in my game, France is going to integrate Nevers, which is going to put them at 41 provinces, which means I actually won't be able to insta annex them. So I'll give them one less province than I did in my game right here, basically have them at 39 max. In my game, they're going to end up at 41. So two less provinces, technically. Either way, now I can also take this mission right here, which gives me government reform progress and unlocks the parliamentary administration government reform. Like I said, this mission here and this mission here, they're pretty important, but no need to strictly focus on them. But you will unlock them either way at a certain point in the game. Either way, parliamentary administration is later on down the line, but for now, for your tier 5 government reform, I recommend going with one of these four right here. Whichever one you want to, all of them are pretty good. In my game, I'm going to take organized military staff. And I'm also going to give the nobility the integration policy right here and start annexing Provence since we've given them back all of their cores. Either way, once you're done with conquering France and you've gotten claims on these provinces in Italy and these provinces over in Spain, it is time for us to start our conquests over there as well, because once we gain 15 provinces over in Spain, we'll be able to release the nation of Spain as our junior partner, and once we do the same over in Italy, we'll be able to release the nation of Italy as our junior partner, according to these missions down here. And then conquering provinces in the lowlands right here is also really good, because it will give us some other nice bonuses as well. That is for this mission right here specifically. So these missions are the ones I'm talking about, not the ones down here. Either way, once you're done with France, go ahead and start expanding over into Italy and into Iberia, depending on whichever is easier for you. In my game, for example, I'm going to make Portugal break their alliance with Castile, just like that, and soon I'll be declaring on them and Aragon. And there we go. There's my declaration. I'll declare for the province of Rusilan, for example, just like that. And I'll call in Austrian Köln and Trier to help out. There are various nations that you can pop out of Iberia. Like I mentioned earlier, we will be playing with subjects pretty heavily, and I can actually call in a lot more allies than I thought. But pretty much the nations of Catalonia in these provinces, the nation of Valencia in these provinces, we got Leon owning a bunch of cores over here, and then you could also do Galicia and Asturias if you want to, although it's not really necessary. But definitely make sure to pop out Leon, Valencia, and Catalonia. And once you go ahead and defeat Castile and Aragon, or whichever one of them you may be fighting separately in your first war, what I recommend taking is the following. First, I recommend getting these provinces right here, basically the entire area of Navarra right here, which is in the Bordeaux trade node. Then I recommend taking these two provinces right here, then these two provinces over here, and then you can also take one more province over here if you want to. This is optional, and that's about enough for now because aggressive expansion is pretty high, and soon we'll be hitting Italy. And of course, it will be high already if you fought in Italy first rather than these guys first. Then you could take warps or money or anything like that if you want to. If not, you can just not take anything to shorten your truce. And there we go. There's your first war with Castile and Aragon or one of them separately done. What you want to do after this war is release the nation of Galicia, release the nation of Catalonia, release the nation of Valencia, and release the nation of Lyon, just like that. Yes, we are way over relations limit, but that's totally expected. Right now I'm losing points since I'm annexing Provence, but it's really not a big deal. 
Either way, we have these Catalonian cores to reconquer, super high value provinces. We have these Valencia cores to reconquer, once again, very highly developed provinces. We have these Galician cores to reconquer. These are pretty decent as well. And then we have all of these Leonese cores right here to reconquer. So that's going to minimize aggressive expansion quite a lot. That's what I recommend you do with these guys in your first war. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing something like that in Italy, and we're just going to have to eat the aggressive expansion. And there we go, Provence has just been annexed. Whenever you can, pass Imperial Reforms as well. Either way, now that I'm done fighting Castile and Aragon, I'm going to go ahead and declare in Saluzzo and start my conquest over in Italy. Remember, to get all of those bonuses from these missions, basically to release Spain, to release Italy, and to gain some nice modifiers for conquering stuff in the Netherlands, we need to own 15 provinces everywhere, as we can see. 15 provinces in Iberia, over in Italy, and in the Lowlands as well. Of course, it'll be a lot slower in Italy because we don't really have nations to release and reconquer their cores, unlike in Iberia, but still, go ahead and start doing it. Now that we're done with Saluzzo, I'm gonna fall annex them. Now to continue with my conquests and to reset my truce with Castile, I'll be declaring on Savoy right here in order to take their provinces and I'll just white piece Castile so we can fight them sooner. Once again, I'll call in everyone over here just so we can wrap it up with Castile a little quicker. And you're pretty much doing the same, either fighting over here or over here or over here. These three regions, Iberia, Italy, and the Lowlands are our main area of focus. And now that I've defeated Savoy in my game, I'll be taking a couple of provinces for them. Of course, looking not to get coalition, most importantly, and I'll get some more reps and money. And there we go. There's our expansion in Italy and in Iberia as well. And initially, of course, if you fought Burgundy or if you've PU'd them, you already have a bunch of provinces over in the Low Countries, which has kickstarted your campaign into those three regions after you wrapped up France. Pretty unlucky that the Protestant Reformation spawned in my subject of Lyon, of all places. And what I did just now is ask France for my core in Armagnac back using favors and by using the console, I took this province over here for myself just to showcase the scenario of what would happen if you actually did give France all of the relevant provinces, or I should say the relevant number of provinces, and now they're down to 39. And now that the Pope has pieced out Pisa that I was helping out, and once you get to Admin Tech 10, you will be doing the same. You will be able to take this right here, the Force Acts of Union debate, where it will start the following debate over in the Parliament, where the country will change to the Angevin Kingdom. And of course, you will be doing all of the stuff that you've been doing so far. Let's give the burghers influence. Let's lose army tradition. Let's ignore corruption. Let's not give them crownland. We can placate the clergy. Lose navy tradition. Lose prestige. Lose manpower. Lose navy tradition. Lose government form progress. And there we go. Just like that, we take new traditions and ambitions. And we are the Angevin kingdom for now. And because France had less than 40 provinces, 39 max to be exact, don't make the same mistake I did. Of course, this is a guide. I'm not an Iron Man. I could just give myself provinces using the console, but if you're playing Iron Man, you won't be able to mitigate that. What you'll need to do if you give France more provinces than necessary is lose some of their provinces in wars or release some nations and ask France for their cores back because they will accept even though they're your subject. And just like that, if France also had less than 40 provinces in your campaign and you insta-integrated them, all of this is now yours and you're the Angevin Kingdom. After that, you will be able to take the mission Acts of Union as well, where we gain some random dev over in these provinces that Ireland and Scotland own. And just like that, you can continue along with your mission sheet with these branches down here. Either way, super, super strong. Now we own all of these provinces. You might be over force limit or over naval force limit once you get these provinces, but don't worry about that. What you want to do with these provinces is insta-state them because you will be able to do so just like that. You won't need to spend any more admin points on that. And I'll go ahead and state the Piedmont and Liguria as well, even though I will need to use admin's points on that. And just like that, that's an insta-annexation on France. If you were Great Britain, of course, it would be an insta-annexation on Ireland and Scotland. Once you do this, make sure to lower autonomy as well everywhere that it's possible. And by around the time you form the Angevin Kingdom and the Reformation comes around, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as England over here, and like I said at the start, you do need to restart until you get that Parliament debate where you can get five Crownland immediately, and after seizing Crownland as well, 
we were able to remove that nasty nobility privilege. After that, we were ready to get our game started by securing alliances with the French rivals and Austria as well, even if they are or aren't a French rival. And of course, then you should have gotten ready for your war with France, potentially having Scotland in it as well, white piecing Scotland, and then focusing your entire troops over here in single provinces to deter the French army from attacking while you were currying favors with the French rivals, like I did with Castile and Aragon in my game, so you could call them in to get them to help out. While you were in the war versus France, you should have gotten the War of the Roses disaster to fire, and you should have either beaten those guys up or let them win. It's totally up to you which choice you do, but after you finish the War of the Roses disaster, and basically your succession is secured and you have a ruler secure, you should have then pieced out France and gotten them as your junior partner. After that, it was pretty simple, chilling and waiting for aggressive expansion to die down before going on to vassalize Scotland and to conquer all of Ireland, and like I said, it's up to you, you could have kept these provinces for yourself or released the nation of Ireland as a junior partner for a little bit of roleplay. But of course, you were following along with those missions. This branch right here, these five missions focus on Ireland and Scotland. This entire branch over here focuses on us conquering the region of France. And then these further branches down here focus on Spain, on Italy, on Germany and the HRE and on the Low Countries. And of course, we do have some additional missions down here, which we need to kickstart by doing nobles and burghers agendas and passing them in a parliament before we can advance down some other missions down here in order to become the Angevin Empire to form the Angevin culture group and basically the Anglois culture which is a merger of the French and English cultures and basically putting English into the French culture group and of course you'll be doing all of those missions down here as well they are super super easy to complete definitely follow along with them later on because earlier on in this starting portion of this playthrough we were focusing mainly on the conquest missions up top but after you pewed France after you subjugated Scotland and after you conquered Ireland your aggressive expansion over in the region of France should have gone down and after that you should have went on to conquer the nation of Brittany and to conquer provinces from Burgundy. If you didn't PU Burgundy, you could try restarting hundreds of times to get Burgundy to not rival you at the start. It's super, super rare. I've tried it many times and I just can't get Burgundy to not rival me. So if you were lucky enough to get the Burgundian succession yourself, then that's excellent and it's super, super strong. But if not, you're going to wait for it to happen and then just reconquer France's cores after the succession has happened. But of course, make sure to not give France more than 39 provinces. I did give them 41 by accident in my game because I forgot about them integrating Nevers. But either way, I just asked for one core back over here in the province of Armagnac and then I used the console to transfer this over to me which brought them down to 39 so i could take this decision to form the angevin kingdom and show it off for you and of course you will be doing the same taking that decision and passing the parliament debate after admin tech 10 and of course during that time frame where you were conquering the region of france you should have allied a bunch of electors to get yourself elected as the emperor of the holy roman empire that's basically us advancing down this branch of the mission tree and of course after you wrapped up everything in the region of france you should have focused on that if you still hadn't gotten it done and then on expanding over into Spain by taking some provinces from these guys, releasing Catalonia, Valencia, Lyon, Galicia is optional, but these three are very necessary. Then, of course, you should have continued to follow along with the Italian path right here. To unlock these missions right here, we basically want to have 15 provinces in each of the relevant regions. After that, we can pop out Spain as a junior partner, just like we did with Ireland. With this, we can pop out Italy as a junior partner, just like we did with Ireland. And with this, we gain some nice modifiers over in the lowlands. Of course, you don't have to do any of these. You could keep all the provinces in Iberia and in Italy for yourself, just like you could have possibly kept the provinces in Ireland for yourself. But I do think it is a cool and unique way to play through this campaign, releasing Ireland, releasing Spain, releasing Italy, feeding all of their regions to them, even though it may not be the most optimal. But then again, I'm not really known for playing off optimally so you can just do whatever you want either take the provinces for yourself or for a little bit of added flavor release those guys and by this point in the campaign you should be the angevin kingdom you should own everything in the britain region everything in the france region and you should have kickstarted your run to take over iberia italy and the low countries and you should be hre emperor of course after this point you're going to continue to expand in the same regions we've already been expanding in since this is the angevin playthrough you're going to be focusing on europe if you manage to pu someone that's colonizing like portugal then that's great it's awesome you'll 
inherit their colonies later on, but that's not something we're really focusing on in this playthrough, even though we have a couple of missions down here which do tell us to colonize, but they're not really relevant in my opinion. So after you've done all of these things, you'll continue to fight over in Iberia, reconquer all of your subjects' as cores right here until you get all of Iberia. After you get done with that, I do recommend pushing into the Maghreb, if I'm being honest, and trade companying everything in the Safi and Tunis trade notes, except for this gold mine right here. And of course, you'll be getting this gold mine from Castile later on. You could keep it for yourself. You can give it to Spain. It's totally up to you. You'll be expanding over in Italy. You'll be expanding over in the lowlands. And since you're the HRE Emperor, you could expand over in the regions of Germany. However, if you're the Emperor, I do not recommend that. I recommend sticking with the Low Countries, France, Italy border right here and letting these South and North German guys do their own thing while you just take advantage of all the nice bonuses. Keep in mind that if you do manage to pass this reform right here, you will have the Expand Empire CB that you can use on various nations around you. For example, like Milan over here, if they're not too big. Actually, it seems that they are too big, but maybe it is possible for some other nations over here. There we go on Padua, for example. So you could expand the HRE, gain Imperial authority through that, and you could even try passing all of these reforms and revoking the privilege and having all of these subjects at your whim. It's totally up to you. In my campaign right here, I just focus on getting the bonuses from being HRE Emperor, and I wouldn't really focus too much on passing reforms since I'm more interested in Italy and Iberia and the Low Countries rather than the Germany regions. But those are the three immediate regions you should focus on expanding in. After that, after you wrap these three regions up, you could focus on these regions right here. And like I said, if you want to, you could potentially steal Norway from Denmark and have them your vassal, and you could expand into Scandinavia if you wish to do so, although it wouldn't be my priority. And by the end of your run as the Angevin Empire, you should have pretty much looked to expand as much as you can over in Europe and in North Africa. Like I said, colonization, that's a completely different guide. This is England to Angevin Empire. That guide would be England to Great Britain. So like I said at the start, leave a like and a comment if you definitely want to see that. But of course, by this point, you shouldn't have only been focused on expanding by PUing, vassalizing, conquering, and stuff like that. You should have also focused on developing your nation economically very significantly, because as you saw earlier, by just us owning the initial provinces and not conquering anything else, we were making a ton of money. And by this point in the game, I'm making almost 100 ducats, which is honestly pretty, pretty strong. Don't underestimate tax development. Lots of people meme on it, but in the early game, it's super, super important. Later on, of course, it becomes less relevant, but by this point, it is super super important this is what i'm making of course i could run massively bigger armies than this i could double my force count right here i could run level three advisors as well so that does need to be brought up but i'm going to show you what i've built in my campaign so far and of course you should look to have something similar by this point as well and keep in mind that yes i am way way over governing capacity right here try to avoid stuff like this to mitigate this for example i would give all of my estates the plus 100 governing capacity privileges and i'd focus on building a lot more more courthouses as well but that's for later of course that's just the situation i found myself in it's easy to get rid of either way back to buildings by this point you should have built marketplaces in all of the relevant provinces all of the center of trade and estuary provinces you should have built workshops in all of the high value trade good provinces basically provinces with trade goods that have a higher price than two i've already mentioned them in a ton of videos but make sure to build them in those provinces iron copper glass cloth paper you get the point and of course you should have built a couple of churches as well in provinces that give you more than 0.1 income per month so i would build them in all of these provinces right here and of course a couple of army buildings here and there you do need to build army buildings for certain missions down here such as this one for example and of course governing capacity buildings super super important as you can see i have them in pretty much all of my original provinces and of course you should have been focusing on upgrading centers of trade as well at least to level two i have london at level three as well and speaking of buildings after you complete all of the relevant buildings and you get your economy booming then you'll focus on the great projects as well the tower of london is super super important along with the stonehenge not really that relevant but pretty nice for staying catholic then you can do the edinburgh castle over in scotland you can do the ones in paris the notre dame versailles the various other ones like the ones down in iberia that are super super powerful definitely make sure to build all of them at least the ones that will conquer over here for ourselves and maybe you could build them for your subjects as well who knows and that's pretty much what your economic situation should look like by now. I have 10 lightships protecting trade in the English Channel, 10 lightships protecting trade over in Lubeck as well. This is my main battle fleet right here. 10 heavies, 20 galleys, and the transports, of course, for moving troops around. Don't put these guys in battle. Don't be like me. It's not that efficient. Just have heavies and galleys fighting. This is all the reforms I've passed. And, of course, you're going to be passing parliament debates the entire time. There are various other parliament debates that you can do from your missions. Super, super important. Don't miss out on them. This is, of course, what we took for a 
first two idea groups, Diplo and Economic, in my run. But like I said, even if you open up with Diplo for your second idea group, you could go with a mill one, such as Offensive, Quality, or Quantity, if you're doing the heavy lifting yourself. If you're letting your vassals or and subjects do the work, like I did, you could go with a nation improving one, an economic one, such as Economic or Infrastructure, to make yourself even richer. After this point, you can take pretty much whatever else you want. If you're still focusing on subject gameplay, and if you're planning on keeping Ireland, keeping Spain, keeping Italy around, getting other subjects, maybe even revoking the privilege, you could of course go with influence ideas for your third one and keep taking non-mill idea groups for your first four. For example, in my game, that would be Diplo Economic, then I take Trade or Influence, and then after that, I take another money-making idea group, such as Infrastructure, for example, and then after that, I do mill idea groups. But if you're doing stuff yourself, and if you're pretty hands-on with your armies, then you should go a non-mill idea group, mill idea group, non-mill idea group, mill idea group non mill idea group, mill idea group, you get the point. This is what we took for our first four government reforms. Like I said, you have a couple of options for tier two and tier three. Go back in the video and see the ones that I recommended for that if you want to swap them out. For tier five, if you're still playing with subjects, I recommend aristocratic court. Later on, when absolutism comes around, definitely swap to royal decree. For tier seven, you should go with one of parliamentary administration or strength in parliament. They are pretty good for a nation such as ourselves. For tier eight, you should empower the burghers or embrace the economic theory. For tier nine, you should take the six books of the republic or leviathan if you're still playing with subjects or if you're planning on blobbing out massively and not caring about religion you could also take the social contract so heretic and heathen provinces don't give us any penalties and then for tier 10 and tier 11 all of them are really good at take whichever one you want at that point in the game you won't make a mistake with either one of them and like i said by on the time you form the angevin empire and the reformation comes around your realm should look a little something like this if you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel and you can continue playing as the Angevin Kingdom from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.